So every year I teach polar and non-polar molecules and every year students seem to get confused by it. So maybe that's I'm a rubbish teacher or maybe it's just a, quite a confusing topic. I'd like to think the latter. So I've been racking my brains and I've come up with this super easy method to use to see if a molecule's polar or not. So hopefully it'll make sense. It'll make you confident in deciding whether a molecule is polar or non-polar. So we'll look at some examples and at the end I'll show you how you would write an answer for the examiner. So basically there's two things that you need to ask yourself or need to consider when you're making the decision as to whether a molecule is polar or non-polar. So the first question is, has the molecule got different atoms around the central atom? Sometimes these are known as terminal atoms. Has the molecule got different terminal atoms. The other thing that you need to ask yourself is, has the central atom got any lone pairs? And if the answer is yes to either of these questions, it's a polar molecule. So here's a quick exercise. There's eight simple covalent molecules. And basically the question for me is, is the molecule polar or non-polar? So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on for the answers. Okay, so I'm going to use these dot and cross diagrams to explain the answers and I would recommend that you always draw one of these when you're working out how you answer to these questions. So the first one, ammonia, we haven't got any different terminal atoms, they're all hydrogens, but we have got a lone pair. So this is polar. The next one, SF6, sulfur hexafluoride, all the terminal atoms are the same, they're all fluorines, and we haven't got any lone pairs. So this one is non-polar. Next one, chlorines around the carbon, no lone pairs, non-polar again. Next one, carbon dioxide, both oxygens around the carbon and no lone pairs, non-polar again. Water, both hydrogens around the oxygen, but we've got lone pairs, so this one is polar. CH3Cl, so that's chloromethane. We've got a different terminal atom. We've got one chlorine and three hydrogens. Doesn't matter if there's lone pairs or not because the answer's already polar. BH3, so it's got no lone pairs. They're all hydrogens around the central atom non-polar. And finally, sulfur dioxide. So that's different to carbon dioxide because it's got the lone pair on the sulfur. So because of that lone pair, it's a polar molecule. So we'll just finish by looking at what to write for the examiner. Now we've established if the molecule is polar or non-polar. So we'll start with the polar molecules. So basically in a polar molecule, the molecule is not symmetrical. And that's either down to the fact that you've got those different terminal atoms or you've got the lone pairs present. So the molecule's not symmetrical and therefore the bond dipoles, or the dipoles in the individual bonds, don't cancel out. And basically for a non-polar molecule, the molecule's symmetrical and that's because either you haven't got any different terminal atoms or you haven't got any lone pairs and therefore the bond dipoles are able to cancel out. And so there's no overall dipole on the molecule. So hopefully, if you have been confused by this, this little video will have helped.